All right, friends. Welcome back to musicmoose.org. And in the last session, we were touching on building a lead uh, with the G run, C run, and D run, and picking out a lead from a vocal melody. And we're using the tune Nine Pound Hammer as an example. And I think we'll just continue on with that one. Uh, for as simple as it is, you can get quite complex with your leads and rhythm techniques and intertwining rhythms and runs together. And, uh, and the use of the seventh chord, too, which we haven't touched on yet. Uh, I think I'll start with that, actually, because usually if uh, you play a straight G chord, now if I was to make that G7, oh, what's the 7 all about? Well, the 7 means that I'm going to take my high G note there, which is note number 8 in the G scale, and I'm going to make G an F, okay, and that makes it the 7th. So G7, that means a G pretty much with an F over the top, okay. Now, if I go G, G7, usually that's kind of an indication that there's going to be a change coming after you hear that seven inversion in there. Uh, you've probably heard it many times and just didn't realize what that was. So if I was to just pick a G chord and then go to a G7 again, just another example of how you can hear that the change is coming. After G7, I'm going to jump right to the C to keep in good with the progression here of nine pound hammer. So here we go. One, two, three. did the seventh inversion over the C chord that second time too. So it really gives it that kind of a bluesy sound. It, um, it takes it away from the straight majors and you can hear it just adds a little more accent to the overall sound and like I was saying you kind of get the feeling that there's going to be a change coming after the seventh inversion happens. So. that 7 inversion over the D also, so I'm giving you an example of a G, G7, C, C7, and D, D7. So each time I do that, you know that the change is coming. Okay, now, um, intertwining the runs, we'll, we'll, we'll put that G run in there along with the G7 and uh, the C and the D, and we'll incorporate a little bit more rhythm and make it just a little bit more in depth. So, from a straight regular rhythm, one, two, three, four. couple seventh chords there and little runs, they're really giving you the, the indication that definitely a change is coming. It makes it a lot more interesting to play. And um, I've always been a big fan of uh, every time the progression goes around after the turnaround again and you start over, 
instead of playing it exactly like you did the first time, try to accent it a little different and maybe throw the seventh in there and maybe the next time don't do the seventh. And you can see how that just overall gives the song, it makes, does make it a lot more interesting and fun to play. And it Actually, I don't think you could ever really get too bored playing G, C, and D over and over with incorporating the runs and the sevenths, things like that. Okay, so um, I'm going to speed it up just a hair and take it out, and I'm going to go ahead and play this nine-pound hammer instrumentally uh, about up to tempo, which would be a normal speed for jamming with your buddies. And just to give you a little example of all these techniques. One, two, three. <laughs> Thanks for stopping in, friends, and we'll see you in the next little picking session here at musicmoose.org.